Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we'll be looking at the map box visual. Now, the map box visual is, as the name implies, a map, and it's a pretty good map. There's actually a lot of things I like about it. You have, for example, the ability to render a lot of locations on a single visual. It actually hits some of the same power limits that Power BI will allow any of the visuals to handle at once. It also has the ability to have multiple layers on top of each other. So you can have a heat map like you see on the right-hand side. You could also have a dot plot on top of that. Or you could even have a cluster map, all shown with inside of the same visual. So it's allowing you to actually show multiple layers on top of each other. It's also highly customizable. You'll see once you get into working with the map box visual that there's quite a few properties that you can tweak to be able to show and highlight and change the colors and maybe make them a dot more opaque. There's a lot of really cool features that are built into the customization section. In fact, there is a whole nother set of map layers that you can go download and create from the Mapbox website, and then import and use those within inside of Power BI. So there's a lot of really neat things that I think you're gonna like about this map. So let's go ahead and walk you through how to use the Mapbox visual and uh, give you a good idea of how it works. All right, so for this example, we're gonna be dealing with complaint data, basically credit card complaint data that occurs all over the country. And so it's not real data, but uh, we're gonna use this as a good sample data set here. I'm gonna go up to the Get Data section and choose Excel. And then underneath the data section, I'll choose customer complaints. From the customer complaints data set, I'll go ahead and bring this in and select my complaints table here and choose to load this in. Now, again, you can kind of see what the data looks like here. It has some date elements to it, but the most important thing is it has some latitude longitude data in here that we're going to use to be able to plot out these data points. So I'll choose uh, load to bring this into my Power BI data model. And once it brings this into the Power BI data model, we'll then go ahead and bring in the map box visual. Again, you can do that one of two ways. I can come up to the marketplace here, or I can click on the ellipsis here and select to import from marketplace also from here. Either way, we'll take you to the same spot. Once you select that though, it'll launch open the Power BI visuals and you can search for the map box visual and you should find it right here. I'll go ahead and select add to bring this into my Power BI visualization window here on the right hand side. And then we'll bring this into our design surface. And I'm going to go ahead and resize this. I'll make this take up the entirety of the screen. I really only want to focus on this one visual for this one. Although do note that the map box visual can interact with other visuals as well. All right, so now that we've got this in here, we're going to go ahead and start by bringing in some data. Now, if we look over on our field list, you can see we have quite a bit of information here, including latitude and longitude, which is required for this visual. And what I'd like to do, though, is you'll notice that there's a little auto sum icon next to the latitude and longitude. There are decimal numbers that are brought in. And so it assumes, Power BI assumes that I want to sum those values. And that's not true in this case. So what I can do is I can actually select the latitude and longitude. Let's select, select the latitude first, go up to the modeling ribbon. And then underneath the modeling ribbon, there's a couple things we can do. First, I can tell it where it says default summarization. I can tell it I do not want to summarize the latitude. And then I can also go underneath the data category here. And I can tell it that this is actually a latitude in the data category. You'll notice when I do that, the little globe icon appears next to the latitude. I'm going to do the same thing for the longitude. I'll select the longitude field, tell it I don't want to summarize longitude. It's more I just want to display it. And then for the data category, this one's going to be the longitude. All right, so now I can bring these into my map just by dragging and dropping them in. And you'll notice when you do that, that you get prompted here to go get an access token or an access code here from Mapbox. This is what you'll use, especially when you're just trying out their, their values or they're trying out their visual. You can see here that they, it allows you to visualize up to 50K map views per month for free. Anything beyond that, obviously they're a company, they're trying to make some money. So anything beyond the 50K map views, you would be able to pay with them. Now, if you want to go ahead and get the free token, you just select this link. It'll op open up a web browser for you. And in my case, it opened on my other screen here. Let me bring it over. And I'm, it will prompt you to create an account. So I've already created an account prior to the video starting. And uh, I can go ahead and copy this little token here, take that back over to Power BI Desktop. And then if I want to make sure that this token is going to be used, you will do that. And they actually give you some really good instructions on what to do next. You'll go underneath the Format Paintbrush over here, and you'll go underneath Viz Settings, and you'll place in or paste in the access token right here. And once you do that, you'll see that it actually renders out your map very nicely. And I can see a list of all my latitude and longitudes that I have for my credit card complaint data displaying quite nicely here. Right now, we're looking at this as kind of a basic circle chart. So you can see our circle, circle map. You can see underneath the format settings that right now circle is turned on. You can turn that off. You can turn it into a heat map instead if you wanted to. 
You'll also have the ability to do cluster maps. We'll see a little bit more about how clusters work in a moment. You'll see there's some other things we have to do to make that work. But for now, let's leave it as circle. And then we're going to go back over to the field list and talk about what other things we can bring into the field list to utilize the map a little bit better. You could bring in something into actually change the colors. So if you wanted to, maybe you wanted to base it off of the type of complaints. You can have the type of complaints be different colors here if I wanted to. So I can do something like drop in the the customer disputed or not. I can drop that in here. You can see whether or not the colors, how the colors are indicated based on that. Or maybe I don't care to do anything with the color. Maybe I just want to drop something in the size and see the size of the bubble or the circle change based on the number of complaints I have. So I can bring in something like the complaint ID, make sure that it's doing a count on the complaint ID, which it is. And then the larger the bubble here would represent them more complaints. And so you can see there's quite a few large bubbles on the uh, top right here. You'll also see there's quite a few down in the southeast in the Miami area. And so maybe I want to focus in on one of those areas. And so maybe I uh, want to look at uh, the Miami region here, or the south, southern Florida area, and kind of focus my attention in this area. So maybe I want to actually see what zip codes those are. So if you look and you hover over, you don't see any zip code on here right now. That gives you a nice little tooltip, but the tooltip doesn't include the zip code. So what I can do is I can actually go find my zip code column and drop that underneath the tooltip section right here. You, have, you can actually add to the tooltips that are being displayed. So again, if I go look here again, hover above, you can see now the zip code is showing up in the tooltip on the top portion of it right there. You can see clearly what the zip code is. So you can add to the tooltip section to be able to see more information whenever you hover above any of the circles that you have. We can also talk a little bit about how the clustering works. I'm going to drop in the complaint ID underneath the cluster section here as well. Again, it should be basing it off of a count of the complaint IDs. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how that works here in a few moments as we go visit the format section. So let's go over to the format section here for a few moments. What we'll find under the format section is quite a bit of that things that you can do. Underneath the viz settings, you can see that underneath the viz settings, you can actually change the map style. So right now, by default, it's to dark. You can change it to light. You can see how that impacts it. You can change it to a satellite street if you wanted to. And I can really go down deep into individual areas and see close at the street level here what's going on. So it's a really high quality mapping tool here. And you can go even deeper. You can see it's rendering and making it clear as we go deeper into it. So that's pretty impressive mapping capabilities here. By the way, my, my latitude and longitude is done at the zip code level. So that's actually kind of centralizing into that zip code. You can even go into a traffic view if you wanted to. So a traffic view here where you can actually see what's going on traffic wise. So pretty interesting. I can see it looks like there's some traffic going on over here. So pretty interesting map visual that you can work with here. Now, you can also bring in your own custom map styles. You'll see on the bottom here, there's an option here called custom. And this is actually a really cool feature of Mapbox where you can actually build your own map styles from the Mapbox website and then bring those styles into the Power BI visual. So I have an example of this here. Let me bring this over here. I have an example here where I actually went and I found some that had been pre-created. I didn't create this one, but I found some that had been pre-created under some different uh, ones where you can kind of get inspired and you can uh, find ones that inspire you. This section here called Find Inspiration. I went in here and I found there were some pretty cool visuals, uh, pretty cool maps that I might want to work with. So for example, this one here called Vintage. I think that's a pretty cool one. I might select the Vintage one and then add that one to my account. And then once it's added to my account, I can then reference that inside of the Power BI desktop. So I can go ahead and close this out and get the link. I should have actually copied the link there. Go back over to our view we had a few moments ago, and you can see that I have both the desert planet and the vintage one here. I can select the vintage one, for example. Maybe I just want to copy the uh, link to it right here, the Mapbox style, the style URL. Copy that. Go back over to Power BI. And when I flip back over to Power BI, I should be able to switch the style that's used right here. So you'll see the style URL. I can now plug in that style URL that I just uh, copied a few moments ago, paste in the one that I just selected, and you'll see my map kind of rebuild around it. And look at this kind of vintage map that gets overlaid on top of what we had a few moments ago. So this is a really cool way to put some additional style into your maps. And that's done through the, the Viz settings section here. And I can flip this to another one if I wanted to. I had the desert. Uh, the desert one that we were looking at earlier, I could easily flip this to another type of map as well. If I wanted to, they make those all available for me very easily.
So that's all what you can do here. It's a really cool set of things, a set of, set of map features that you have. You just kind of sign into your account, and then you can start using those styles here. Now, on top of the styles, so we've kind of set a style up here. On top of the styles, we have a lot of other things we can do. If we go down to the sections here that are related to the layers of maps, right now we have one layer map layer turned on. We have the circle map layer, but we can also turn on a heat map layer or a cluster layer as well. And if we look at some of the settings in here, you can actually do things like increase the radius of those circles. So if you want to make it a little clearer of where the, the, the sizes are more different, if, say, for example, you have a lot that are very similar, you might increase the radius. That's one option you have. You can also affect things like the colors or maybe blur them or remember we didn't put anything in the color section of ours so we would need to put something into the color section to actually be able to uh, modify the colors here. You can change the opacity. So if for example, you want to make them a little bit more transparent, you can change the opacity of them. You could even change the uh, blur. If you can actually blur them a little bit so that way whenever they're mixed together, you can kind of blur it a little bit. It makes it a nice, nice little way of visualizing it. You can increase the, the, the thickness of the, the, the black border around the circles. So that's kind of what you're seeing here with the stroke width and the stroke color. Stroke color. Those are awesome features that you have in here as well. And then if we work our way a little bit down, we can take a look at what it would mean to turn on a heat map. If I hit the heat map option, this is a really cool one. If I hit the heat map option, you can see we now have a heat map on top of our vintage map, which is really cool. And what I often like, times like to do when it comes to heat map is because we have so many values that are clustered together here, I might actually change the radius of my heat map. Rather than showing five, I might show it as something like two so I can more easily see where those values are. And you'll notice that the other layer of our map is still hidden in the background there. Now, by doing this, I can see that, yes, yeah, South Florida does have a pretty high frequency of values, but so does the Northeast. And I kind of saw that before, but because there were so many on top of each other, it was a little bit more difficult to see. And if I go up in the Northeast, I can actually see that is true and I can zoom in on that area if I wanted to and really focus in on what is appearing within inside of that region. So it's a pretty cool way to be able to see what's going on by changing the radius. You can also change the intensity, the opacity again. A really cool way to be able to have multiple layers. And you can still see my circles showing below as well. Now, if I wanted to turn off the circles, you could, of course, come back up here to the area that's called circles, remove the circles, and then now it's just showing purely the heat map area. It's a pretty cool feature. I might increase this just a tad and maybe three radius and then you can see there it kind of plots it out a little bit better so you can see more. Finally you'll see there's also the ability to do cluster. So let's turn off the heat map for a moment and turn on the cluster. And when you turn on cluster this actually really does show me where the values are clustered in. And so I can see it looks like it's kind of plotted these out into different clusters here. I can see there was 1,336 1, complaints showing up in the northeast in this area. There were 424 in the, the southeast the Florida region here. And you can just kind of see it clusters these together so you can see the density of where the values are. This darker color here indicating, of course, that there are the most values shown here, that there are almost twice as many values there than there are anywhere else in that region of the country. So pretty interesting to be able to see that. You also have the ability to turn on and use a choropleth. So there's actually ability from the Mapbox website where you can go get a vector tile and you can reference that URL with inside of the choropleth setting here to kind of plot out a choropleth map on top of the vintage map that I have here. So there's some kind of cool settings that you have in regards to that. You can go look at the tile sets that they have on the Mapbox website and see how you can integrate a choropleth in here. And I've, I've kind of described what a choropleth is in a previous video, but it's a nice way to be able to kind of plot out regions and be able to see tiled regions on top of your map. All right, so pretty cool features that set that they have with inside of this one. Highly customizable, a lot of different settings that you can turn on, tweak, and use. I'm going to flip this back to more of a heat map here for the moment and uh, just show you the fact that it is really cool, really interesting, the way that you can be able to work with and customize maps using the Mapbox visual. Great one here. I really enjoyed this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this as well, and I look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module. Thanks a lot.